I was working a late shift at a ski resort. It was about 11 p.m. I was working at the top, and the wind had been really strong that day, and had made some of the lights go out. The big floodlights on the hill. I was just sitting up there in that dank ass shed, freezing my ass off. I hadn't even had the chance to use the bathroom since the start of my shift. We only had the same six people come up the lifts in the past hour. Then, for some reason, the lift stopped. I tried to dial down, but it wasn't working. Then I tried to restart the lift automatically. That didn't work either. Then the wind started to pick up and was rattling the windows. And that's when I saw it. This fucking form walking up the hill in one of the floodlights. I tried my hand radio to see if it was someone coming up to relieve me or something, but oddly, it wasn't working. I freaked out, so I got really paranoid and started gathering evidence to prove that weird stuff was going on. I took a picture of the volume, power, and channel knobs of the radio. I took video of me trying to restart everything and snapped pictures of the figure walking up the hill, which just looked like shadows, thanks to the mini blizzard and shitty camera. Then, the shadow got to the end of the floodlight's path. The three lights beyond that were out. I lost sight of it for about seven minutes, during which I only got a single message. Hey, McGee, do you see that person walking up the hill? I did, but I can't see them anymore. What's wrong with the lift? No answer after that. Then the shadow hits the third from the last light from the top shack. This one's very small, and only about 70 feet away. I could barely see the person, but they certainly didn't work there, and weren't wearing any ski gear. Then, like God commanded it himself, the snow stopped. Just like instantly stopped. The wind, the snow, everything. The figure is just out of the light's path for less than 30 seconds, when the power starts up. When the rest of the lights come on, there's no one in sight, and there's a path that goes into the woods heading up towards the shack. Then out of nowhere, the wind and snow started again. I was fucking freaking out. I grabbed my utility knife and clutched it tight. Then. I saw another figure, but this time on the lift. It was my fucking manager. Ah, oh, finally. I was out of there. On the way back down, I saw the path diverge back down the hill right after it hits the woods. When we were just past the halfway mark on the lift, I saw him again. My manager looks at me, and I guess that my fear was insanely obvious and he asks me what's wrong. I look back down at where I had just seen the person, and he was just staring up at us. His torso was sort of like, almost bouncing, as if he were laughing. Either that or he was crying or coughing. My manager just looks at me. I could barely make out the man's white face in the squall. The next day when I show up for work, there are cop cars there, and there are chairs in the snow. That son of a bitch I had seen apparently sabotaged the lift and assaulted the night manager that caught him on his way back down the hill. I worked night audit at this semi-swanky hotel next to the airport. One night I get a call from a lady in 204. She says there was arguing, loud banging, and crying coming out of 206. I check the computer, and no one has checked into that room due to maintenance issues. What the fuck? I called my supervisor to see what to do, and she tells me to call on site security and follow them up with a key. No thanks. But I decide to be the bigger man 
and go up anyways. As we get off the elevator, we can hear the crying. It's loud. My heart starts racing as we near the door, so I hand the key to the security guard. The next five minutes seem to happen in slow motion. He opens the door and immediately flicks on the light. Keep in mind it's room 206, we're on the second floor, and the only door was by me, this is like 3am and there was no one around. As we enter the room, we notice the shower is on, steam is coming from under the door. There's only one lamp on in the room, it's super cold, and there's a lady in a red lacy bra, black panties, with super red hair, curled up, crying in the bed. She was facing away from us. As Frank approached her, he asked if everything was okay. She sort of stopped crying and rolled over. When she did, a wave of horror came over me. She was super pale, covered in blood, and was just staring behind us. That's when we realized that the shower had stopped and the door was open. There was a man about six foot five standing in the doorway. As we turned around, the cops tased him and arrested him. Turns out he was a rapist who hides in hotel rooms, kidnaps women who stay there, and cuts them open. To this day, I will never go to a hotel again. It had been a long, tiring day at work. It was quiet as I waited alone for the train. It was a bit after midnight and so dark that I could only see the square foot around me that the small light illuminated. Fortunately, I wasn't stuck waiting long for the train. Eagerly, I ran in the second the doors opened. There were only two other men in the compartment, not unusual for this time of night. The place reeked of smoke from the older man huffing on a cigarette. He took another long drag of it and watched me as I came in and took my seat. I sat and looked up at the other man, sitting across from the smoker. He was only about five seats away, but his face was hidden by his hood, so I had trouble making out his features. His eyes, though, I could see those clearly. One was normal, but the other, the other was red, where it should have been white. He stared shamelessly back at me with a tight, almost pained expression. I smiled at him, trying to break the tension, but he just stared. I looked out the window, trying to ignore his gaze, but I could still feel his eyes on me. The train lights began to flicker and went out for a moment. Sorry folks, said a voice over the static of the PA. We're gonna get maintenance on that in the morning. We apologize for any inconvenience. My stomach dropped and I struggled to control my breathing. I reminded myself that there was no reason to be afraid of the dark, that I was a grown man, a tax paying adult who, oh thank God, the lights were back. I hadn't even realized my eyes were squeezed shut. Sighing, I opened them to see the man's unsettling eyes staring directly into mine, from only two seats away now. Bewildered, I looked over at the older man who hadn't moved from his seat. He took another long drag from his cigarette and coughed, acting like nothing had happened. The train rumbled down the tracks. I was afraid to look back at the red-eyed man. I didn't want to. I didn't want to move or even breathe. I tried to convince myself that the whole thing was in my mind. Maybe I was just tired from a long day of work. Or maybe I was just paranoid and he wasn't even looking at me. The lights flickered again and went out. I, 
held my breath, waiting for the lights to come back. After a moment, they did. And he was in the seat next to me, his face only a few inches away from mine. I leaned back. What the hell? What are you doing, man? He didn't respond. Instead, the smoker angrily said, Look, kid, if you wanted me to put out the cigarette, all you had to do was ask. Not you, this asshole over here, I said. The smoker stared at me for a second, confused. It's just me and you here, kid. Are you alright? The red-eyed man hadn't moved or responded at all. The lights went out again 